Our thought today is being famous on social media is basically the same thing as being rich in Monopoly. So today we look at three famous people of the early church, Barnabas, Paul, and Timothy. We have the Acts of the Apostles where we have St. Paul um, allowing Timothy to be his disciple, to be his follower. But remember, St. Paul also had somebody that allowed him to be his disciple, and that was Barnabas. If it were not for Barnabas accepting Saul of Tarsus and befriending him and welcoming him and mentoring him, we would not have had the great St. Paul. Remember when Saul was converted, the apostles were scared of him. They thought it was a trap. They thought it was a trick that he was just trying to get into the apostolic circle so that he could have them all arrested. But Barnabas, his name means the son of encouragement, was willing to take the risk. And he befriended Saul of Tarsus and became his mentor, his spiritual director, his guide in the spiritual life, and was able to help produce St. Paul. And notice that St. Paul then would do the same thing for Timothy. Timothy, had mentioned here, had a, in Acts chapter 16, a mother who was uh, Jewish, but a father who was Greek, a pagan. So Timothy had not been circumcised. And so when St. Paul allowed him to become his disciple and take him on missionary journeys, not in order not to cause scandal to the Jews, he had Timothy circumcised. So notice this, really, this hierarchy, Barnabas, Paul, and Timothy, that all of us need these kind of people in our life. If we're like a St. Paul, we need a mentor, we need a spiritual guide, a spiritual director, whether it be getting some words of advice and confession or perhaps going to someone, a priest, a deacon, a religious sister to get spiritual advice, going on retreats. We all need a Barnabas in our life to give us encouragement, somebody that we can talk to that can be our mentor. Maybe if, if you're a mom, maybe it's another mom that has been uh, a mom for maybe a longer time and you could get advice from that other mom or dads can meet with other dads and talk to some of the, the men that you admire with, for their wisdom and their virtue and their holiness and they can be your, your encourager, your mentor. So all of us need a Barnabas in our life. We all need mentors and spiritual guides to help lead us closer to Christ. <clears throat> but then we all need Timothys. We all need people that we need to disciple, that we need to encourage and to be mentors to. So think of who in your life, obviously your children and grandchildren, you can be a, a St. Paul to Timothy to them. You can give them encouragement. You can help give them spiritual guidance. So who in your life are you ministering to, to help them grow in their spiritual life. So always remember that Barnabas, Paul, and Timothy, and we really need a Barnabas in our life, and we need Timothys in our life that we can help them grow closer to God as well. So in that first reading, we have St. Paul traveling around. He accepts Timothy and takes him on the missionary journey. And an interesting point it mentions here that when they went around, they handed on to the people for observance, the decisions reached by the apostles and the presbyters in Jerusalem. The apostles were bishops, and then, of course, the presbyters were priests. <clears throat> and so we have, what we see here is apostolic authority, that when they would travel, they would hand on the decisions that were made by the apostles and the priests in Jerusalem. And for that reason, the church continued to grow, it says, in faith and in number. So we have here the apostolic authority they were able to educate these new Christian communities in the faith. And then the first reading ends by, we have here St. Paul and Timothy were going to go to one area, but the Holy Spirit, it says, prevented them. And then it says the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them to go certain directions. So they notice that they were so attuned to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And eventually the Holy Spirit, through a vision, had a Macedonian, a Macedonian as a, somebody from northern Greece, appear to St. Paul in a dream and say, come to Macedonia and help us. I remember when Maximilian Kolbe was on a train in Poland, he met a group of Japanese students and they said, come to Japan, we need the Catholic faith in Japan. And so Maximilian Kolbe and his Franciscans 
went to Japan and started a community in Japan. So again, very similar. God will send people into your life and he wants us to respond to them. And the, the last thought would be that what, whatever happened to Barnabas, Paul, and Timothy? Well, the gospel tells what will happen to them. Jesus says at the Last Supper, if the world hates you, realize it hated me first. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. What happened to Barnabas, Paul, and Timothy? They all died martyrs' deaths. They all died, they were all persecuted for the sake of Christ and the sake of Christ's name in belief of the resurrection, and they all gave their lives for Christ. So what Jesus said at the Last Supper was fulfilled in the lives of Barnabas, Paul, and Timothy. In fact, if you, one of my favorite scenes in The Passion of the Christ, the Mel Gibson movie, The Passion of the Christ, is at the Last Supper, where Jesus says these words to the disciples, as they persecuted me, so will they persecute you. And Jesus said this on the night before he was to die.